James, James, first, second Peter, Revelation, and show you the exact same pattern of persecution that Christians go through all around the world. So now you got one group called Christians and they're being persecuted. And you got another group who call themselves Israelites and they're saying, oh, we're cursed. And yet the Hebrew Israelites somehow know the difference between these two groups. Let's forget about the fact that, you know, when the slaves were, you know, uh, forced Christianity on them and things like that that the whites actually stopped it because they started noticing, well, now we, they kind of know how to read because we started showing them that Bible. Now they actually got hope because of that Bible. Maybe we should stop. So guess what? They did stop. So the slaves, or at least the majority of slaves, were Christians. So now, are they persecuted like Christians or are they cursed like Israelites? The Israelites will say, well, man, we believe they're cursed. Well, based on the scriptures, they put their trust in Jesus and now they're Christians. And Jesus said, well, you know what? If the world hates you, no, it hated me first. Bless those who persecute you. Ah. And you know what? Here's the last part before I go ahead and finish this off. I'm going to go to a peculiar scripture that, you know, once again, is something I'm kind of working on. Last thing I'm going to say before I go ahead and wrap it up, I'm going to go to Isaiah 66. Yep, I'm going to go to the last chapter in Isaiah. And this is what it says. Now get this. I want you to keep in mind, persecuted, right? Led captive in all nations. And I also want you to keep in mind, go out into the world and make disciples. Those two groups. This is Isaiah 66, verse 18. For I know their works and their thoughts. At the time, and the time is coming to gather all nations and tongues. And they shall come and shall see my glory. Mm, That's a good thing. Okay. And I will set a sign among them. Okay. And from them, I will send survivors to the nations. Survivors of what? Well, I mean, if you're going to go ahead and be Jesus and you're going to give a warning to your people and say, hey, 70 AD is happening soon. Armies are coming to Jerusalem. You guys need to flee away and get out before it happens. So that way you can survive. And from them, I will send survivors to the nations. Oh, you know, go out into all the world, uh, uh, make disciples, baptizing in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost. And lo and behold, I will be with you until the end of the age, teaching them all that I've commanded you. Isaiah 66, 19. And from them, I will send survivors to the nations. Matthew 28, 19. I will send them to Tarshish, to Pool, to Lud who draw the bow to Tubal and Javan. And we know Javan is Greece and to the coastlands far away. You know, aren't the coastlands kind of associated with the Isles of the Gentiles? You know, I'm just saying, but anyway, let me go ahead and continue. That have not heard my fame or seen my glory and they shall declare my glory among the nations. Well, yeah, in the New Testament, what glory would that be beside the gospel? I don't know anything else more glorious than the message to take them about Jesus. That, that's got to be glorious. I don't know anything more glorious to, to go ahead all the way to these nations and tell them anything more glorious than that. Sending survivors to the nations. And shall bring all your brothers from all nations as an offering Before the Lord. Oh, so they shall bring all your brothers from all the nations as an offering before the Lord. Oh, okay. So at first, the earlier verse is about, hey, you know what? You're going to go ahead and be a light to the Gentiles. And all of a sudden, verse 20 seems to say, hey, you know what? Let's not leave the Jews out either. The Jews that are been scattered by their own Messiah as a punishment of rejecting them. So we're going to bring all your, you know, all those Gentiles, those survivors, you know, who are my Christians, 
my disciples, the survivors who've been sent out to the nations. Oh, don't worry. They're going to bring all your brothers from all the nations as an offering to the Lord, right? What a beautiful offering to bring a saved Jew back to God. That, that, if that ain't an offering, I don't know what it is. On horses and in chariots and in litters and on mules and on dromedaries. Right. You know, that, so that's just going to show that, OK, they're going to bring them back in royalty. He's trying to describe it in the best ways that he can using, you know, the, the things that would describe that at the time, which would be horses and chariots and things. To my holy mountain, Jerusalem, says the Lord, just as the Israelites bring their grain offering in a clean vessel to the house of the Lord. Oh, so he's comparing what the Jew, what the Gentiles are going to do to the Jews. He's comparing it how the Israelites bring a grain offering as a clean vessel before God. So now we definitely know who's bringing who. And some of them I will also make for priests and for Levites, says the Lord. Hmm. He's making these Gentiles, and Levites and priests. You know, where have I heard that in New Testament? Oh, you know what? I think... Peter and John said that stuff when they were writing to the seven churches and all the other, you know, uh, uh, Christians that they're writing to. Let me see. You know, if you look in Revelation chapter 20, verses four through six, chapter five, verse eight through 10 and chapter one, verse four through six, you'll find phrases like these. Now, I'll just read one for sake of time. Revelation chapter one, verses four through six. Here's one part. It says to him who loves us and has freed us from our sins by his blood and made us a kingdom priests to his God and father to him be glory and dominion forever. Or how about, you know, chapter five, verse eight through 10, it says, and by your blood, you ransom people for God from every tribe and language and people and nation. And you made them a kingdom and priests to our God and they shall reign on the earth you can go to revelation chapter uh, 20 verse 4 through 6 you'll see the same thing and of course you know uh you can go to the famous verse of uh first peter uh chapter 2 ver uh, i'm sorry it's uh first peter yeah first peter chapter 2 verses 9 and 10 where he says look you guys are a chosen generation you look at that word generation and it's race he's calling the christians a race just like Jesus did when he said, I will uh, give this, uh, I will give your kingdom to another nation to bear its fruit, right? He says, look, you guys are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people. That you should shoot forth the praise of him who will call you out of darkness and a marvelous light, right? Which in time past were not a people, but now are the people of God, which had not mercy, but now obtain mercy. He's taking that. In the Old Testament, you quote it and it had a condition. It said, look, if you do this, then you'll be my priest. In the New Testament, he lops that off. He just says, nope. Hey, you guys are Christians. You're in Christ. You are priests. You're a royal priest of the holy nation. You're in Christ. So, if that is the case, how can we end up looking, saying, you know what? It's important to know who we are, but you got to know you're an Israelite. How do you know that those people all over there are Israelites in light of all these similarities? That's just one thing that we need to think about. I'm going to go on mute. Uh, one quick question, uh, Brother uh, Surreal. Give me so, one, two, one, two, or three. What are the similarities that you're talking about? How do you know that you're an Israelite, an Israelite based on all of these similarities? What similarities, brother? All right, here's one right here. One group is persecuted, and they will point to Jesus telling them that, hey, you're persecuted, right? But I say to you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. Matthew 5, 44. That's a tough place to be in. I mean, if you're going to be persecuted and suffer and all this other stuff that I read, well, the other group says, we're cursed. Well, what's that look like? Well, read Matthew 28. Yeah, you're going to have, you know, sons and daughters, and they're going to take them from you, and they're going to do this and do that and all these bad things. And, you know, you're going to try to grow your food, and it's going to just 
run dry and, you know, just, I mean, you're going to really have it rough. Well, now you got two groups that have it rough. One is because one's being persecuted and the other one, they say that they're cursed, which, you know, would include, you know, being treated pretty bad, you know, perhaps persecuted. And there's the similarities, but yet somehow some people are able to look left and look right and say, oh, that's a Christian and that's a Jew. In light of that, I don't know how people would be able to walk up to someone and say that. Okay. Well, let me say this. Uh, can I can I respond now, brother? Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, okay. First of all, you said Christians is like a is like a race or is a race. That's false, brother. Christian is not a race. Christian is a global a global identity with God as a child of God. A Christian is a saint. A saint is a child of God, and that could be anybody of any race. Now, to say that uh, uh, once you become a Christian, you become a different race, we know that that's not true, brother. Whatever race you are, that you you will you remain to be that race. Whatever sex you are, you are that sex when you become a Christian. Now, right. yes, yeah, okay. So now, uh, you also said, uh, "Oh, Jesus, still die." No. Jesus. Yeah, they're they're using that they're, they're using that word race in a very different way. I really didn't get to break that down, okay. but you know it's okay. It's all okay. good. We'll talk about it next time. Okay, if, if you mean it in a figurative way, I'll roll with that. Yeah, okay. yeah, right. yeah. We'll okay. break it down next time. That's okay. okay. No That's, fine. That's fine. Um, let me say this. See, this is the issue that I have with Christians. This is the issue what I have with Black Christians. And what I'm having with you all tonight and why we're having this discussion. Okay. Now, all of you, my black, my black brothers and sisters, shield squad. Okay. To the pleasure, to the uh, 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 assuredness and to the comfort of our white brothers and sisters, those, those who you all associate with and those who, who, who there are some of us who think like them in the negative way. There are those of us who are black on the outside and white on the inside, brother. And uh, what I am saying is that you all are making a mistake. And this is why we're having this discussion and hopefully I can show you that you're making a mistake. And I'm not saying that we should not attack false black Israelite doctrine. Because you know I'm on the front line of that. I've been doing that probably before you've been doing it. Like I said, I've been doing it before you was born. Okay? So, brother, wherever false doctrine is, we need to tear it down. And you know that's what I do all day. If y'all go through my uh, my Facebook page, you will see stuff about uh, black Hebrew Israelites. You will see stuff about Muslims. You will see stuff about everybody, anybody and everybody. Where there's a lie, black Jesus ministers on the scene. Okay? And brother Surreal, you're talking a lot of things about the black Hebrew Israelites, which I agree with, but you're talking it in a way that makes it seem like that I might be agreeing with me better than that, brother. So I'm going to ask you, brother, you don't need to reiterate all the falsehoods that they teach because you know I'm on it just like you are. All right? You know that. And anybody who knows me for any length of time knows that. Okay? And I have been challenging them and calling out, calling them out, and I'm still doing it. And you guys have been doing it, and we've been, and we, and I think we've all contributed, and we're doing a good job. And I'm praying that you all continue doing what you're doing. Now, do we need, do we need to know who the Israelites are? Oh uh, yes, we do, and that's where we're going, there, brother. That's where I I'm see. Going. The, the, there I'm you going go. Now. I'm going there. Well, there it is. Hold on, hold on. So now, what I'm saying to you all, and to my black brothers and sisters right now who are listening to this show, my problem with what I'm hoping to correct, I'm saying to you guys, continue to to, to uh, destroy false doctrine. But the identity issue, if they are saying that they are Hebrew Israelites, and I agree with them, and there's much evidence to prove that, that's not the devil. That's not the false doctrines that we should be approaching and trying to destroy. Even if they want to believe that they were Hebrew Israelites, as long as we destroy the false doctrine that they attach to that identity, which is supremacy, 
in every in, in, in every facet that they have created with they with their weird minds and indoctrinated minds, ignorant minds, brother, who are darkened. We're supposed to bring them light and bring them light, and they can still be Hebrew, they can still be Hebrew Israelites, but just have correct doctrine. Ain't nothing wrong with anybody being a Hebrew Israelite and having the correct doctrine because we got plenty of Christians, brother. Pretty many of cult Christ, Christians that are cults and they got false doctrine and that are destroying people likewise. Okay. Now, so my point is, is that our job is to destroy false doctrine. Not so much that we have to sit up here and uh, uh, attack people's identity. And if they find and if they find solace in that identity, whether it's true or not, there's nothing wrong with it. But the problem that I have is that our black people and that you brothers and sisters that I'm talking to right now, you all don't have no problem with these European Jews over there occupying Israel along with African Jews, the, the very few African uh, Israelites that they've allowed into the country. You all don't have no problem with the white Jews in Israel and all over the world. Reminding the world every day through Christian, through the evangelical movement, through all kinds of Christian organizations all over the world, and especially here in America, reminding them that we are the Jewish people and that we need America and we need the world and other people to help defend us and help protect us and help honor us because in doing that, there is a blessing in doing that. Almost every day or every other day, there's a, 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 a televangelist, some big time preacher, is mostly our white brothers and sisters, who are constantly reminding the world and Americans that we need to pray and we need to preserve and we need to protect Israel. But you, brother, so real, and you, sister Cherry, and you, sister Angie, when black people proclaim that they are Israelites who look just like black Jesus and these other ones who don't look like black Jesus, you all have a problem with that. I have a problem with that because that, dear sister and brother, is a form of self-hatred. Okay? Likewise, it can manifest itself in colorism because we have been conditioned to believe that black is nothing. That black is that black is debased. So why waste your time uh, trying to teach black people that they're Israelites? We don't need to teach them nothing about themselves. The Bible is not just a spiritual book and a spiritual guide; it is a history book. So why do we need to, oh, to brother, teach hold on, hold on, people? So, hold, so my problem. So I want you to understand my problem. I want I mean, you to understand my problem. So I, I understand problem, it. I understand it. Problem, but let me finish it, Matt. Let me finish. But I understand it. it. I understand your problem. Man, I'm almost finished, brother. Just let me finish. I just want so you to answer the question, man. Like, I understand your problem. Brother, brother, trust me. If, if I miss it, ask me again, and I'm going to come back to it, and I'm going to hit it, brother. Now, what I am saying is that is a problem, brother. If, the very, if there are people over here and Jews are scattered all over the world, among all the nations, dear brother, and we black people look like black Jesus, and you don't have a problem with white Jews saying it. I don't have a problem with them because I know the scripture says that they are all scattered among all nations. I'm not denying them, but they deny us and our non-Jewish white brothers and Gentile white, Gentile white brothers and sisters that try a uh, 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 foment and help subsidize and help uh, 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 fertilize you all who don't understand the importance of it, as I'm going to try and attempt to do to to do tonight, to try to uh, 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 foment you all and push you all up up front to try. Well, okay, while we're destroying all this false doctrine, and oh, y'all are not Israelites. That should not be your agenda. Okay, so why is it that the why is it now? You say that the the, the issue is one of the issues is that you know they're denying who we are. You know, my question is. Based on the Bible and based on, you know, the actions of the Jews that were in uh, uh, Judea at the time, why is it that it's important for them to not be denied by Jews if one, they already know who they are? And two, if, if you know, people in, in the New Testament weren't even hung up on their nationality like that, when you look, like even Philippians three, if I read to you Philippians three right now. It will literally show 
the people who are wanting and wanting to uh you know say hey affirm us as jews you white jews affirm us affirm us it will show that the christians weren't even concerned with that when you read acts chapter 2 and acts chapter 5 where it says that they sold all they had including their land Ain't the black Hebrew Israelites so passionate about getting their land back, even though when you look in the New Testament, not one uh, uh, Christian or, or Israelite uh, w- was ever excited about getting land back. In Acts chapter two, Acts chapter five, they were selling their land. They sold all they had, including their land. Not only that, but every time they spoke about getting to Jerusalem, they always spoke about the heavenly Jerusalem, which is the mother of us all. Galatians chapter four, the Jerusalem that is above. Right. Which is Hebrews chapter nine or chapter 12. You had the Jerusalem, the holy city that's coming from God out of heaven, not a a Jerusalem that was made on the earth. No, the Jerusalem that's coming is the one that's going to come from heaven made by God himself onto the earth. And that was the Jerusalem that the Christians were so, so excited to get back. They said in Galatians four that Jerusalem today is Hagar and Hagar is Mount Sinai and she is in bondage with her children to this day. That's how I was describing the present Jerusalem and the black Hebrew Israelites are excited to get that back. They want to end up affirming, you know, who they are and, you know, oh, you know, the white Jews won't allow us back in the land and they know we know who we are and we want to, you know, things like that. What do you do with Philippians chapter three, where Paul said, look, man, I counted all this as dumb. You know, I was the one that kept the law, all the righteousness. But when I pursued Christ, I, I you know, I, I, ca- I counted all that as dumb, including my identity. I was circumcised on the eighth day. I was born of the tribe of the stock of Benjamin and Israel and this and that. But you know what? Now I glory in Christ's sufferings. I want nothing but Christ." That's literally his attitude. That is not the attitude of the Jews. I keep on saying it over and over. Every time people present an argument and say, hey, look at the Jews, look at this, look at that. My question is, why are they so worked up on stuff that the Jews and the, that became Christian New Testament were never worked up on to begin with? Okay, now hold on, Matt. Now here's my question to you. And I'm, a- and I'm answering your question with a very solid question, brother. Brother Matt, do you have any issues? with our white Euro watered down Jewish brothers and sisters over there in Israel who are running Israel and who are very prejudiced against the African Israelites? Do you have any problem with them affirming their Jewishness? And do you have a problem with them fighting for their land to this day that is probably that is going to be the center of World War III because God uh, prophesied that they would get this land back. Do you have an issue with them maintaining ownership of their land and 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 emphasizing their identity all over the world? Do you have a problem with them doing that, brother Matt? I got a problem with them uh, doing those things based on the fact that it's wrong. But here's the thing: there's no such thing as a watered down Jew. You're either a Jew or you're not. Why do I say that? Because Jews were never a race to begin with. I keep on saying that you can go through 10 or 12 scriptures. You know, if you count the New Testament, you can go through 10 or 12 scriptures. It shows that circumcision is what makes you an Israelite. It's what makes you enter the covenant. And it's, it's what makes you a Jew or an Israelite. It's not birth. OK, that's well, why even though so the, the, other, the other thing I did want to say was, is that. When you have these Jews who end up uh, doing all this bad stuff, well, that just goes to show that it was no different than how you had in the Old Testament, where in the Old Testament, you had, I believe, about 19 kings that were in uh, Israel, and you had a few of them that were in Judah. All of the kings that were in Israel were bad. Matter of fact, they're the ones that actually brought other kind of worship and stuff. Now, the other is the other kings in Judah. There are about maybe two or three that were good. All the rest, once again, were bad. They did crazy stuff. They ended up depending on Egypt when Assyria was coming. And God said, why don't you lean on me? They said, no, nah, we got our own plans. They killed their prophets. They actually brought Baal worship in. One of them actually married uh, a woman that actually brought Baal worship in. Her name is uh, Jezebel. We all know about that. Matter of fact, the New Testament actually compares Jerusalem 
to Egypt and uh, Sodom and Gomorrah, spiritual Egypt and spiritual Sodom and Gomorrah, because it was a place that they persecute, that they uh, that they killed their Lord. So if you're going to say that, yes, you know what? The Jerusalem today, they crazy. They got issues. They ain't treating people right. And you know what? You're right. Kind of reminds me of the Jews in the Old Testament, who, according to God, they said he said that they did worse than all the other nations around them. And you know what? Maybe it's still like that today. I guess the only difference is, is that some of them are in great power and rulership. <laughs> but that's a whole nother story. So, yeah, okay. you're right. OK, so I think if I understand you correctly, you do have an issue with the Euro Jews who are in Israel and all over the world. You have a problem with them maintaining and fighting and warring for the land of Israel. You have a problem with that, brother? Um, no, I don't have a problem with them maintaining, you know, the land that God bless them with. You know, if they want to go out and do that, then then that's fine. Now, I'm not saying that I'm all for it because, you know, that's really not the Jerusalem that the Jews in your Bible got excited about. Okay. So my question, once again, I don't think you answered, so I'm going to ask it again. Okay. Why is it the black Hebrew Israelites are excited about getting that land back? And the, and the Bible that you hold uh -huh. have Israelites selling their land and, and not even excited about that. And they're excited about the Jerusalem that's above. I didn't even pull out all eight scriptures to show that. Why, why is that? Let me, let me answer why I got it on top of my head before I forget. The reason why they're excited about be going back to Israel and owning part, part of Israel, because it is prophesied that the Israelites would, would, would again regain uh, uh, ownership of Israel, brother. That's prophecy, brother. Anybody should be should be should be uh proud and and looking forward to and they've looked forward to for hundreds and thousands of years for the return of their of the of their people to their uh ancient homeland there, brother. That's why what, the black here oh, what, that's what why, scripture uh, oh, hold on, what bro, scripture on. and what prophecy shows that we're gonna get the physical land back. Uh Okay, well, let me. I, I will. I will pull that. I can't remember off the top of my head, brother. Uh, but let me. I, I hold on, but you let me finish saying what I'm saying. Answering your question, then I'll try to find that scripture. Okay, because brother, that's their homeland. Okay, and it was prophesied that they would be back there. And I'm gonna find those scriptures if you're unaware of them. But I'm surprised that you're unaware of them because uh, I've, I've heard televangelists teach this all the time, over and Trust over and me. over. Trust me, okay. believe I'm definitely aware of those scriptures. Okay. Um, okay. It's just that when we start going to them, okay. it's not it's not going to it's not going to be what you think. Disagree with them. So do you disagree with those scriptures? Do I disagree, disagree with your interpretation of those scriptures. So I'm telling you right okay. now, if you pull up one right now, it's not going to go in your favor. Oh, it's okay. going to be okay. in a way okay. where we'll see. Look. we'll see. We'll see. Hold on now. I want to. So anyway, I'm answering your question so we can move on and then we're going to come back. I come back with this with the scriptures. Because that's they believe that that's their homeland, all right. And the scriptures support you disagree that they would be go that they would come back to that land. Then okay. why is it that okay. in the New Testament, okay. Okay. not okay. one Christian okay. in the New okay. Testament who are Jews, why is it that they never got those scriptures and pulled them and said, "Oh, we're so excited Brother to get the Matt. land back." Brother, why Matt. is it that they're Brother they're Matt. not doing that? Prophecy in a New Testament prophecy is also found in the New, in the Old Testament. That death and the birth of Jesus is found in the Old Testament, brother. So let's not sit up here and play and 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 mess up like that. You misunderstood okay. me, so I'm gonna ask the question again. Why is it that the New Testament Christians and you know those who were Jews who became Christians, why is it that not one of them ever had the 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 the, the freedom? I mean, not freedom. Why is it that they they did not uh, reach back? into the old testament like we are today and say oh i can't wait till we get our land back why is right. it that every time we look in the new testament that they're getting excited about the heavenly jerusalem i don't know if i agree with you on that i don't have to look into that off the top of my head i can't give you a, a definite answer on that but what i can give you a definite answer on dear brother and we will find it now you saying new testament saints okay and of course when you call the the disciples Christians, yeah, they were Christians because they were followers of Christ, but they were Jews first. Exactly. Okay. And I asked you the question, why are these Jews not uh, using the Old Testament scriptures to say, hey, we're going to get our land back? Why are they doing the exact opposite? For example, in Revelation chapter 21, where it says, and I saw a new Jerusalem coming down out of heaven 
from God out of heaven. And it said this after he made a new heaven and a new earth, which means that that earth, that old earth that had that old Jerusalem was passed away. And there's a new earth that's going to be made and a new heaven is going to be made. And a, and a Jerusalem that's going to come out of that new heaven is going to come onto the new earth. And that's the one that they're excited about. Matter of fact, it sounds like that's going to be one that kind of outlasts the temporary one that the Jews today are getting excited about. Absolutely, Matt. I agree with that there brother but that still does not mean and we will try to find the scripture before this show is over with that prophecy will not be fulfilled there is prophecy that the jews would return to israel and we're not talking about the new jerusalem brother that's now, been now, fulfilled hold on, bro. hold on, brother. okay look uh you agree i i say yes you say no we will look at that later i'm just answering your question so, so we can move on so that's I'm, 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 I'm just get, i'm just like you know brother. right now that that's been fulfilled bro. brother brother okay Okay, brother, it's been, okay, so you agree that it's been fulfilled, and by Israel becoming a nation, what was that, 1948, 46, or whatever, you agree that that's the fulfillment of a prophecy? Do you believe that? Nah, man, it was fulfilled in Acts 2. Yeah, okay, so you're saying that Acts 2 is the fulfillment of, of, of Israel uh, becoming a nation in 1968? 48. Would you like me to show you? Sir, but no, no, I'm just asking, no, but brother, no, we ain't got to go there. I'm just asking you, do you believe that Israel becoming a nation is a fulfillment of scripture, whether you think it's in the Old Testament or do you think it's Acts? Do you think no, that- No, I, I do not believe that uh, Israel becoming a nation in 1948 was a fulfillment of Bible okay. prophecy. I mean, All right, not, I disagree no, no. with you, brother, so let's move on. Let me move on. We don't need to stay- Nah, after. how about we go and demonstrate? Because, I mean, uh, I'd like to pull up Acts chapter two and show you right now. Brother Matt, hold on for a second, brother, please, because I'm, I, I want to go back to our to, about the black Hebrew Israelites. Why it's important to identify them. OK, yeah. so let's let's go back there. Trust me, I am going back there. OK, and I'm answering your, your segment. I forgot the second part of your question. Now, what was the second part of your question? I mean, well, the, the second part of my question was I, I asked you, why is it important to identify the Israelites if you know, hey, the new covenant has come and now we're, we're Christians. And two, how is it that you can identify an Israelite from a Christian if the, if the Christians are being persecuted and the Israelites are claiming to be cursed? How can you tell that uh, difference? Uh, okay. Um... I mean that man. You got to have some. Okay, well, let me say this. Okay, let me say this. Let, me, let me say this for you to, for you real quick. The way that you the people have known that they are Israelites, brother, is because of family heritage and lineage, brother. Okay, so everybody on the planet who knows, except Americans, those who were not enslaved and who were stripped of their identity. Now, even the ones who were enslaved to a certain degree in the very beginning knew who they were. You could talk about Africans who came over here knowing that they were Israelites. Just like the Africans in Africa right now, we came from those Africans in Africa who know that they are Israelites and, that they, and they descended because of their history that they have kept and the traditions that they keep to this day. So that's how we know that those people are. Now the reason so my why- next hold, hold So on, my man, next question on, is, man. Man, what, what is my next okay, question? Is this man. what is the uh, no? Man. So, my next question is hold on, time out. So, man, man, oh, no, 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 wait, no. So, my next, no, wait, wait. So, but my man, next question me, is this, man, let me, you, no, look, bruh, 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 bruh. Look, 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 my, ne my next, my next, you, you did, you did answer it. So, my no, next no, question is this, give me about 30 more seconds. You're good, you're good. You answered it, no, brother, man. If you're gonna sit up here. Ask me a question and then tell me when when I need to shut the hell up, brother. Something wrong. Hey, with you. I didn't tell you to do that. I didn't tell bro, you brother, to do that. Brother, I just said that you answered the question, brother. brother you're doing it with your action. I said, no, I'm not. Thirty more seconds to finish my answer to your question. But you, you already answered it. Seconds. But you should have been. Now you good? No, brother, I'm not good. You, if I'm your guest, you let me asking me questions. Let me finish my question, sir. What's wrong with you, man? Give me thirty seconds. Now, brother, the last 30 seconds that I wanted to say to you was that because we are over here in America, the Americas, and we are the descendants from the majority of, of West African slaves who were the majority of those who were enslaved in the transatlantic slave trade, Jews were persecuted on all continents. 
So therefore, likewise, the Jews, the black Jews on the African continent were likewise persecuted and most likely were those who were enslaved and sold to Europeans. And thus we are over here and, uh, and are realizing that we are of those black Hebrew Israelites who were persecuted in Africa as, as as Hebrew Israelites were persecuted in every nation of the world, brother. Oh, okay, okay. So, like, you, you pretty much just reiterated what you what you already said. So, my next question is this: you know, if 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 that is your 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 basis, then how can you look at all the African Americans here? and determine which ones are Israelites and which ones are not. Because we all know that the people who came over in those slave ships, 100% of them were not just all Israelites. So how do you make a differentiation between some person who comes from some tribe that, you know, had, had converts and all of a sudden they passed down that for their family lineage and all this and that from somebody who's just from some African tribe. How can you look and say, well, 10% are Israelites, 50% are Israelites, 90% are Israelites, 5% uh, are Israelites. Like, how can you tell like which one is and which one is it? And my next question is, what percentage of people over here in Americas do you believe are Israelites? Uh, I would say those of us, the majority of us who are uh, descendants of African-American slaves throughout all of the Americas are most likely uh, Israelite of uh, Israelite heritage, African. No, Israelite. no, I, I, I want it. I want a percentage. Bro, brother, 25, me, 50, uh, 75. OK, OK. Uh, I would say, dear brother, maybe, maybe, maybe 80 percent or more. And the reason why I say the more and I'm going to tell you why I say the more, brother, is because when the. Africans were being brought over here to the Americas and the Africans were getting rid of the Israelite Africans because they were different and worshiping a strange God to the gods that they were worshiping. They had no problem getting rid of them and enslaving them as all Israelites were persecuted all over the world. And but when they brought us over here, Matt, the unique, the unique thing about us, I call us super Africans. African Americans of all the Americas are super Africans because uh, you go to Africa, right, okay. Oh, oh, okay. Jesus. So, can I can I say something, oh, Matt? Oh, Surreal, oh, can oh, I say oh, something oh, real quick? Yes, yes. Can, can I, I finish? Will, all right, can get, I, go, go ahead. You, you, you can say something. I'm, I'm gonna go back on me for a while because no, I mean, I'm, I'm sorry, I didn't know he wasn't finished. Hold on, sister. Hold on, sister. Right. I'm almost finished. I'm almost finished. Please. Yeah, bring some proof, bro. Brother, excuse me, brother. You mean tell me I need to bring proof that we are descendants of African a, a, African Atlantic slaves, brother? No, you need to bring no, proof just, that no, no, no. Okay, you need brother, to bring brother, proof brother, that eighty percent, brother, 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 hold on for a second. Just, let me, thank you. Let me finish that when I got to say. Cause see, you guys getting all riled up because see, we're talking about ourselves, and this is a form of self hatred. No, 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 no. I'm not. Brother, no, I'm not getting riled brother, up about that, me, brother. I'm not, I'm not. I'm not. I want to correct you. I'm not getting riled up about that, bro. I am almost finished, and then we'll go. Let so him I just, I just wanted to correct brother, that. But go brother, ahead. Brother, let me finish, please. So, brother, we are super Africans. When you go to Africa, you're gonna, you're gonna, you got different countries in the continent of Africa. You go to Nigeria, you meet a Nigerian. You go to Kenya, you meet a Kenyan. You go to Ghana, you meet a Ghanaian. But when all when the slaves that came from all the Israelites all through all over the continent of Africa and came over here to the Americas, the white man didn't care who was who and what was what. They they bred us and we married each other regardless of what particular part of Africa we came from. So we are mm. a mixture of all of Africa. So it, it's a possibility that every last one of us who can trace our descendants <laughs> African American slaves, it may be 100% of us because we were all mixed together. Okay, slave, once again, now family. there's two pro Okay, now once again, there's two problems. Problem number one, I already showed you through the Bible that the Israelites were never a race to begin with. So that means that people could go ahead and, uh, you know, uh, marry non Israelites and things, but if they're not going to circumcise them on the eighth day and they're not going to go ahead and keep them under the law of Moses, they are none of his. They are not Israelites. I already showed you that. So you're treating your premise like what the Bible does not treat it. You're, you're treating it like a race, even though the Bible never even paints it that way. And that's not even a qualification. The second problem is 
is, is that on what basis can you say that 80 percent of African-Americans are Israelites if your notion of treating this whole thing like a race is faulty to begin with based on the fact that uh, Israelites are never a race to begin with based on how God himself in Genesis 17 has defined Israelites in the Bible by circumcision? That's my question to you. And I do oppose calling them a race. They are a nationality, an ethnic group, not a race. Right. Not by birth, but by circumcision. Sir, no, 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 brother. By blood, brother. Circumcision. Uh, well, my brother, bro, no, 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 no. Look here, man. All right. Well, Just, I'm uh, done. Uh, uh, Angie, you could go ahead. I'm, I'm finished. You know what I mean? Because that, that's solely okay. against Bible. You know, yeah. I'm done. Go ahead, sister. Yeah. Go ahead. Thank you. So I have a couple questions. Um, I was listening to the commentary, not needless to say, I don't have to go back and listen to any of the other stuff to find out, to show you, to send you a message about what you say that I disagree with. Because this whole second half, I would just go ahead and put a star next to that. Um, so tell me about your your background on this historical information that you believe that you have. What's your historical background? You're a historian? Uh, no, I'm not, sister. Uh, I, I'm a human being just like you who loves to read and study and learn. Uh, I'm an educated person. I do have a master's degree in education. So uh, I do teach children and I teach adults. And I am a minister them? of the gospel. And well, I what do you teach, teach the them? Excuse me? You said you teach students and adults. Uh, what do you teach them? I, I am. I have a master's education. in, in uh, master's No, in I didn't education. ask that question. I just said, what do you teach them? Reading. Are you teaching? Biblical reading. stuff, or are you teaching a subject, or what are you teaching? I'm a reading teacher, sister. I don't critique. Okay. That's the subject, reading. Okay. okay. So I was actually going to make a general comment in the beginning before you guys went way off the rails. Go ahead. And my comment to you was going to be, can you send me, I mean, not this evening, but I would be interested in this information that sure. you seem to have gathered that told yeah. you that you were an Israelite. I'm interested in that information. So far, mm -hmm. uh, so I never heard of this until my husband brought this foolishness to me. But um, from the research that I've done in the last year, I've yet to discover, hold on, hold on, let me finish my comments. Okay. I've yet to discover this information that you seem to have found and I've considered myself a excellent researcher. Okay. And I've still not found it. So I would be interested in reading that. The information. Oh, please do. I'll share now. Um, yes, sir. Thank you. Okay. I mean, I'll, I don't want you to talk about no, it. No problem. No, I'm finna share it right now on, on the screen. Okay. This, is, uh, this right. is what I was going to do earlier, but we got to talk about a whole bunch of stuff. So, okay. uh, brother Sorrell, I'm about to share my screen with everybody, and we finna show y'all some information. Okay. And information. Okay. Uh, let me get here. And make sure. while you're pulling that up, let me go comment on a few other statements that you made. You talked about it's self hate because you assume that uh, the names you called out was Surreal, Sherry, and my name, that we don't have an issue with the European Jews and what's happening there and their racism and other things. Well, um, so leave my name out of that because you have no idea what my views are on anything. Yeah, so, leave my name out of that. Leave, 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 leave me out of that. I try to so say you can, so okay, you can well, say, well, no, wait a minute, hold on. Ahead, so you can say Surreal and Terry because you seem to be familiar, but you cannot throw me category because you have no idea hold on wait let me grab your screen